So the title will be clear to, maybe towards to the end of my talk. Uh, so we will first start with some short introduction to uh, BPS counting. Yeah, so uh, what uh, uh, this big claim from physics? Uh, suppose we get X, which is Calabi-Yau, uh, three-dimensional Calabi-Yau. All right, yeah? And it has some um, uh, holomorphic three-form and also Keller one-one-form. Mm. So I denote by gamma the lattice of integer homology, modular torsion. Uh, uh, this lattice carries uh, an intersection pairing. And, and also, we can integrate three zero forms of our cycles and get something which is called central charge, gamma to C. So class gamma goes to the integral of three form. Uh, okay, and now assume uh, then complex structure on X is uh, generic enough. And generic in the sense that if you, uh, this map Z uh, has a following property. If uh, you have two vectors and corresponding complex numbers are parallel as vectors in R2, then uh, gamma 1 should be just parallel to gamma 2 in a lattice. Now, for generic complex structure, it will be the case. And uh, the claim that uh, in such a situation, one gets some uh, remarkable integer number for any gamma in the lattice, which is not zero. You get number omega gamma, which is symmetric, which is even number, uh, even function, with values and integers. And uh, this is what people call, uh, this is called number of VPS states. And in fact, it is earlier characteristic of some graded vector space. So the space is defined in some complicated way. You, uh, you assume that you have some uh, associated to Calabi, you get some strings uh, uh, theory uh, on a flat Minkowski four-dimensional space, and then consider one particle states and count something one particle states and also uh, believe that everything goes well and then you get this integer number. Uh, so it's going through scattering theory. Yeah, so uh, these numbers uh, satisfy some nice properties. Uh, numbers uh, 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 do not depend on complex, depend on complex structure, on, on Keller class. And and they all, almost do not depend on uh, complex structure. Locally constant uh, in complex modular space. And, uh, they j uh, and they jump according to some rule when several charges became aligned. Mm. And uh, uh, wall crossing formula, which describes uh, the rule how the numbers uh, jump, is uh, the, uh, roughly speaking the following. So mm, you can see the some uh, uh, angle sector in C, and such a boundary of the things uh, doesn't contain elements of Z of gamma, or all gamma. We get some discrete set, which is everywhere dense, but uh, still for a rational slope, it will be okay. And then you uh, make the following product. You take product over all 
gamma sitting in subject Z of gamma sits in this thing. You make product of certain transformation to certain power, uh, to powers omega of gamma. Uh, where transformations are the following. It's actually a rational map uh, over a uh, torus, which is just home from gamma to C star, uh, uh, which maps x mu, uh, some monomial, uh, considering algebra functions, maps to 1 minus some sine. Where epsilon is a, a quadratic form with values in uh, plus minus one, so you find this uh, uh, rule, and uh, mm. uh, yeah, there is a more invariant way to say it, but in fact, it's, I have a question to audience, maybe uh, to physicists who, I don't know, to Andrew Netsky, or who is, or no, who is present here. Uh, is it choice of epsilon? Is it choice of structure? Or uh, is it uh, physics predicts that there will be some specific epsilon or not? That I, I don't know. It actually is quite. Yeah, yeah, so you get this, uh, uh, transformations, but uh, how to interpret these things? And you get infinitely many things, uh, infinitely many transformations, so you consider this transformation of formal power series in appropriate completion, and then it makes sense. And then the rule is that kind of this product it stays uh, uh, locally constant. And um, in, of course, it cannot stay locally constant uh, because there are um, charges dense everywhere, and if you move a little bit, there will be something crossing the wall, uh, uh, crossing this boundary of this angle uh, very far away. But if you cut the situation, you get finitely many uh, terms, you get finite uh, expression, and um, so the charges can be aligned inside. And uh, I forgot to put many things. You order these things in a clockwise order, respect to argument. So the, uh, this, uh, you have some element in the group here, write unique way the product of transformation to some power, and, the, uh, and uh, order will change if you move a little bit complex structures, and then omegas will change in some way. Yeah, so that's a wall crossing mm. formula. And what is good for? What it's good for, uh, uh, yeah, first of all, these numbers are something which you, because of the wall crossing formula, you have kind of control, and physicists are happy that they know how many dions, whatever they have in their series. Yeah, but, but also, mm, uh, yeah, uh, these things gives you a, a system of coordinate changes. And in certain approximation, uh, it gives you uh, uh, some, uh, some new universal complex symplectic manifold. Uh, actually, it exists only as a formal scheme. I will not really go to the details. Uh, um, uh, the products are not really convergent because these numbers go very fast. Uh, and this complex symplectic manifold, it's also not a finite object in, uh, in string theory. And this should be divided at infinity of, of some actual uh, uh, object, uh, which is uh, kind of still kind of fake object. And actual object will be complex contact manifold. Ah, so if it's any uh, families of Calabio's three fold, will be new contact manifold associated. And its uh, contact manifold um, is twister space for something called quaternionic Keller geometry. And people expect this hypermultiplets with string coupling constant form is, uh, uh, I think. So it will be actual, um, very non-algebraic, transcendental complex object coming from the sink. But it has one more direction, and uh, then one should add one more index to this gamma. It's called NS5 brains, and 
for this, uh, we have very little understanding. There's no mathematics yet associated to this. Yeah, so it's only kind of approximation to some uh, future structure. Uh, so it will be some uh, uh, complex things built with, from integer numbers, but uh, some very interesting object. Okay. So uh, that's, that's a physics prediction. And, and we have some corresponding um, mathematical series. Uh, name in mathematics is Donaldson Tons invariance. Uh, in fact, there are uh, three uh, uh, series uh, at the moment. First, uh, there is the most rigorous one established by Joyce and Song. Uh, uh, in a sense, he thinks about mirror dual variety. So we have some mirror dual Calabia. And uh, you can see the coherent sh shifts on this uh, thing and some stability on this thing, on this abelian category. Uh, and then uh, he defines some numbers, omegas, but only which there's really no control. These numbers are rational numbers. Uh, they are not integers a priori. And um, uh, this choice of coherent shifts, uh, 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 it's slightly wrong. I'll just uh, one second. Then we have uh, this uh, Jan Söbelman, some series developed a few years ago. Instead of such thing, we consider uh, three-dimensional Calabi-Yau uh, triangulated category. So it should be the, like boundary-derived category of coherent shifts, or if it uh, should be Foucault category of the original variety with symplectic form, and some bridge on stability, and plus. Uh, some choice of some square roots, whatever it is. It's related to the sign question, and it's very mysterious. We still don't understand in the situation. Uh, then we get also these things. And also we get more. Uh, we get omega gamma, which belongs to maybe rational function in one variable. So we, in a sense, we quantize, simplect, uh, quantize simplectomorphisms. Uh, I have to say that the choice of coherent shifts in Dre uh, Sonk is uh, kind of very wrong from point of view of string theory. One should consider if one make analogy with this, uh, if one look at physics, one should go more to perverse coherent shifts, not to uh, coherent shifts that's very far away from what is uh, right this structure. Yeah, but then it's very theoretical. We don't really know a, a single example of compact Calabria category with stability condition. And then there was a third theory, it's by the same authors, but later. Uh, we, uh, we make a different story. You can see the arbitrary quiver with superpotential. So it's a combination of cyclic word. Uh, and also, uh, instead of quiver, we have many generalizations. We can put some conditions, kind of like some expressions are forced to be nilpotent. Or something should be invertible. Yeah, so and quiver, past algebra and quiver can be replaced by something more general called smooth algebra. So it's kind of completely insane generality of this thing, which also produces some three dimensional Calabria categories. And then we get uh, some different complicated theory. And at the end, we get integrality of these numbers and also for quantum numbers. Or you 
get Laurent polynomials with integer coefficients. Yeah, the proof, uh, it's actually maybe interesting from physicists because at some point we have something like a locality of correlators uh, coming from um, pure topological considerations. Uh, but uh, at the very end of the proof, we, um, we kind of lo uh, lose track of combinatorics, so topology and uh, to integrality follows from some a little bit periodic arguments. It's n n not, uh, we don't really see integer numbers, we don't see vector spaces at the very end. Yeah, so it's. Uh, um, uh, so the solution is uh, not satisfactory, and this uh, framework of quivers really doesn't apply to these categories. We cannot really deduce in geometric situation integrality. Yeah, and also, I want to say that uh, 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 these numbers, this omega gamma, it's still not a uh, very fine invariant. It's still finite sum of more fine invariants. Uh, namely, if you consider uh, 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 holomorphic bundles on X check, On object from derived category, uh, then one gets a chain class with values in some lattice in, in even homology with rational coefficients by, by chain classes. But, uh, uh, but it's not only one thing which you can see analytically. In fact, there is something called the link homology. Uh, one can also have extension. By intermediate Jacobian. So we get some non algebraic torus sitting uh, around. And, uh, chain, uh, and uh, there's something like chain, class, uh, chain Simons classes of homework bundles, which are elements of this torus. And for generic complex structure, you get again countable subset, which forms some countably generated subgroup. And one can fix also this more uh, uh, detailed invariant of your uh, bundle. And then this number should be also uh, decomposed, splitting the integers. So this thing is not yet uh, popped out in, in physics, but I'm sure that it will pop out uh, someday because it's naturally you see that you uh, have some interaction of A and B module uh, stuff. Uh, so it will be, so it's a, uh, at the end of the day, it will be very complicated. Uh, structure because of this thing. Yeah, but the result of it, we really don't understand integrality up to now. So this, uh, and in physics, it's, the argument is quite fishy. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so, so that's a uh, general picture. But now, the second topic which I'll start is algebraicity. Mm. So, uh, mm. uh, first, uh, 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 there was some example in the very early days. You can see the Kronecker quiver. You get k arrows between two vertices. Uh, then one can consider the quiver with zero superpotential because there's no loops, and then we get some, the whole machinery works, although there's no uh, it's, uh, when k is at least 3, it's not uh, possible in physics situation by uh, positivity constraints. So it's kind of wild case of physics. So lattice is here, Z2. Uh, symplectic form is this guy. And transformations which are interesting, it's when a, b is inter integer in the square. It's a transformation. I can write it immediately. It's x. Uh, goes to x1 minus the same expression. Okay, so you get these transformations, and mm. uh, if you change stability for the square, you, you play the following game. For example, consider t10 multiplied by t01. And try to decompose as the product 
of uh, this transformation in clockwise order. And if k is equal to 1, you get very simple things. This is five term relation, but, but when k is 2, you get infinite uh, things related to Zyberg Witten curve. Uh, and some gauge theory model, uh, but for k greater than 3, you get uh, something not from physics, but still mathematically makes sense. And from k greater than 3, what you get? You write uh, t10 times t01 as a product of t a b to some omega a b, but now a as a ratio should strictly in increase. And you make a table of these numbers. So a, b, you get element 0, 1. And the whole thing is invariant under, hyper, uh, invariant under uh, transformation, which is, uh, what is it? It's something like, you can see this is hyperbolic matrix. And uh, the whole picture is invariant under this transformation, so uh, there are two hyperbolas uh, on which numbers one, one, one along the orbit. But then in the middle, it's filled by uh, complicated uh, things invariant on this transformation. Uh, there are numbers everywhere. And uh, then the computer experiment shows a diagonal part. This will be x goes to some x multiplied by a function of x, y, and y goes to some y times this function of x, y inverse. And function is 1 plus something. And in fact, it was hypergeometric. That was easy to see in the coefficients. And algebraic function. It was pretty complicated. I don't remember this. Yeah, so for a specific term, we know that's algebraic, but or by orbits of this element, we also know the algebraic. And then it was uh, also by observed by Mark Gross and Bernd Siebert. Uh, one can, in fact, prove it, but uh, then for many years, we didn't know what happens with other direction. And now the fact it's contribution of any ray is algebraic. Uh, mm, yeah, so we get plenty of algebraic transformation. There was a different example which uh, also has no physical sense. You can see that any quiver is zero potential. Maybe with loops, then the transformation will be the following: x i uh, uh, goes to x i prime. Uh, uh, the, tr uh, the transformation associated to upper half plane uh, in the sink, and the transformation given by the following uh, uh, way: first you solve system of equations in some variable i. And then goes to x i prime equal to one minus v i divided by the same product by here a j a a i j is number of arrows from i to j. Yeah, so it's, it's slightly different here i j and here j i. Yeah, and you see that v are algebraic function from x, and then x prime is rational function of v, so it's again algebraic function. Yeah, so you get uh, mm, mm, uh, such. Uh, I, I will explain just in case of two variables. Mm. Uh, suppose you get a transformation from form power series into itself, uh, preserving a symplectic form. Uh, uh, and also, such that f of x is x plus high order terms. And Wise, wise, terms. Uh, mm, is this transformation mm, mm, belongs to some group? And 
and whose Lie algebra is product over all A, B in this square, which is not equal to 0, 0, of monomials and bracket is Poisson bracket with respect to the symplectic form. Yeah, so it, uh, and this Lie algebra we can split in some of three uh, uh, subalgebras. So we get uh, monomials in A is greater than B, A is equal to B, and A is less than B. And then any element of the group we can decompose uh, uh, uniquely in the product of three things. Uh, and the, uh, the theorem is if he is algebraic, then all his three com constituents are also algebraic. And of course, it's equivalent. And uh, the proof is uh, doesn't really need any formulas at all. Uh, proof uh, one uh, uh, is the following: We want to see some group and solve subgroups, and groups which should uh, uh, interpret this automorphism of something. So the group G, uh, related to this algebra, is automorphism of form of our series preserving the things and also tangent vector. So it's automorphism of this uh, draw neighborhood of zero in coordinates x x x y, uh, preserving. Volume element or symplectic form, which is just repeat again, uh, with first of the poles and also tangent vectors. I get two tangent vectors, yeah. So it's automorphism of these things. Now, what is uh, G, uh, whatever, plus, or um, how do you define G plus and G minus? Uh, uh, first one, consider product of P1 cross P1 with coordinates x and y. Mm. You have the surface, and now make a blow up at two corners. One get a hexagon with all P1s here, and here, uh, and here, uh, uh, here the coordinates will be x, y on the product. Now one can make a, let's consider, formal neighborhood of this horizontal line and blow down. So it's we blow up, blow down, and what one obtain? One obtain a formal neighborhood of a plane with coordinates y and xy with the same volume element. And we consider automorphism of this thing. So, and with tangent vectors, uh, it will be, one can easily see it will be monomials in y and x, y, so it means that uh, we get uh, g plus times g zero. Uh, and how to make this g, uh, g plus only? We want to kill diagonal term, and g plus is automorphisms of with more structures. We consider the same thing, formal scheme, but now we consider uh, mm, uh, mm, the same thing plus trivialization of normal bundle to uh, x, y axis. And G minus has similar uh, things. Mm. And, and then uh, one can uh, see what is a double coset space uh, in terms of uh, moduli problem. It will be moduli space of the following uh, gadget. You can see the surface. Uh, which is a formal neighborhood of uh, two P1s and also some germs of another curves here. 
uh, with volume form, uh, with some tangent vector here and here, and also trivialization of normal bundles. Locally, the picture is here uh, canon uh, unique, but you have a group of automorphisms and uh, you, you blue such things. And now, how to read, and then it's isomorphic to G0, to diagonal terms. And how to read G0s, if you analyze it, the following equation. You consider point on this germ of next curve, and then there will be unique uh, CP1, which goes here, maybe still in this small neighborhood, and intersect another point. So you get a one-parameter family of rational curves. So the whole thing is eventually filled by rational curves. But on these rational curves, I'll get to realization of tangents. Uh, uh, it has two marked points intersection here and here. But also I get tangent vectors in these two points, which means it's essentially I have something like four points on rational curve and get cross ratio. Uh, so I get uh, this cross ratio depends on position, on the starting position, you get function on one variable. Okay, and this will be contribution uh, how to read middle term from uh, this decomposition. So it's some question in geometry. But now, if my function, uh, my uh, transformation was algebraic, then what I glue is piece of algebraic surface. And now consider some curves here which form one parameter family. They below, maybe, uh, so it means that reach point to get one thing in this form of neighborhood, but maybe finitely many in the whole algebraic curve. So I get algebraic family of curves and get algebraic equations. But if you try to translate these things to formulas, you get enormous uh, things which I am not there to write here. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, algebraically in kind of implicit way, but one can really go to the end. Okay, so there is this general thing. So this algebraicity is uh, kind of ubiquitous. You see that if you have such thing in the compose, you get again algebraic uh, uh, functions. And so on. And for example, in all Gayota, Murnitsky examples, you also get algebraic things everywhere. But uh, I, I want to warn you that it's not the end of the story, because in Donaldson's theory invariance, we expect more complicated things. Mm. 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 Uh, in fact, we should have, uh, this should be related to some kind of only simple cases, but then we should get modular forms, uh, which is still algebraic geometry, but then we should get Mach-Mahon function, which is not algebraic geometric object, and, uh, and maybe something more com even more complicated, yeah. So algebraic functions, it's a kind of zero level uh, still for the whole story. Okay, now I have to explain you this K2 stuff. Mm. And uh, all this, uh, so this, we get symplectic algebraic symplectic transformations. Maybe you just go from, uh, from series in some point variables to itself, uh, preserving some form, some of them we get j dx i dj. We get transformations, but in fact it uh, uh, works with integer coefficients. Uh, uh, I, cl I claim that it's a more than symplectic transformations. Because what we have the symplectic form, uh, which sits in uh, uh, where? It's close to form on algebraic torus, yeah? On N. And algebraic, it means it extends to, to Z of X1, X2, N bar. Uh, uh, so we get a, a, a algebraic torus. Uh, the two forms uh, uh, um, come from some more delicate thing which is called K2. Uh, 
uh, let's denote by f to be a field of rational functions. On my variables with rational coefficients, it's a field. And then there is something called Milner K-theory, especially Milner K2, which is the following. It's, mm. now first of all, I'll explain what is K1. K1 is a group of invertible elements as abelian group in logarithms of elements. And K2, it's the wedge square of K1 uh, divided by Steinberg relations. Namely, uh, uh, you, uh, you divide by f wedge 1 minus f. And this thing maps to form because you consider a wedge b you go to the a to close to form. Uh, and definitely this thing go, will go to zero. Mm. Mm. And uh, uh, the claim if one can follow these arguments with curves as well, uh, then uh, if phi will be algebraic K2 simplectomorphism, and then all then all phi plus phi zero phi minus are also. Mm. What is K2 simplectomorphism? What is algebraic K2 simplectomorphism? We consider graph of phi, which sits in star to power four, and now. Uh, and uh, it's some sub-algebraic variety defined over uh, some integers. You get some field of fun functions. And when you get two elements from K2 coming from two pullbacks, they say that they coincide. It says it's K2 Lagrangian. Uh, F is a field of functions, of rational functions on, with Q, Q coefficients on, on the graph. Okay. Now, maybe I should exchange something. So now, kind of, the punchline is that uh, the integrality is guaranteed for by, by this K two simplectomorphism part of Don's and Thomas invariance. So it's maybe that's the kind of right structure which we uh, see at least in algebraic case. What a this good class of symplectomorphism are uh, K2 symplectomorphisms. Uh, no, if you have, if you have some algebraic map which is uh, symplectic, then consider the graph, it should be some algebraic variety in a symplectic torus. It will be Lagrangian, we put appropriate symplectic structure, but it will be Lagrangian in the strongest sense. You get a class of K2, restricted for ambient variety, should be zero. So it's almost a serum. Uh, this DT invariants associated to uh, K2 symplectomorphisms are integers. Mm. Ah, just before going on, I just want to, uh, 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 I will explain the proof. It will be the last thing in my talk. Uh, uh, just I want to say that this K2 symplectomorphisms and K2 Lagrangians are ubiquitous in some other things in, coming from physics. Uh, uh, things called apolynomials. For example, if you consider a uh, three-dimensional manifold with a boundary, you get some surface. And you get some reductive group over complex numbers. Uh, or YZ, YZ. Then consider representations of a fundamental group of M3 uh, three dimensional manifold to the group. Sits in a space of representations of fundamental group of a surface to the group. Uh, this carries uh, its K2 symplectic manifold. And this is K2 Lagrangian. Uh, for example, if you have a, a sphere minus uh, minus knot, then you get and group SL two, you get something called a polynomial. You get in C star square, you get some complicated algebraic curve, but of very special type. Uh, I'll show you one of them in the moment. Uh, so the claim that uh, Donaldson-Thomas numbers are uh, uh, 
uh, integers and yeah. So the basic example is uh, maybe the simplest example is the following. You can see the function of one variable, which is one, which is generating function for Catalan numbers with changing signs. Uh, then the graph of f is is k2 Lagrangian. So f h t is equal to zero in in the ring of uh, in in k2. Mm, and then a uh, function one can write as a product of 1 minus tn times cn. The cn and integers, it's completely obvious by induction, just prove that all coefficients are integers. But then omega n is cn over n is also integer. And uh, in a sense, it's kind of related to the fact it's uh, uh, f which t is equal to 0, because we, we write the following. What is f which t? It's product of 1 minus tn to the power n omega n, which t, okay? And then you write as a sum, because it's, uh, these things are kind of logar, uh, you take logarithm of them, it's sum of over n of omega n, 1 minus t to the power n, and then because of uh, additivity, it's which t to the power n, and this is Steinberg relation. So it's formally infinite sum of Steinberg relations with integer coefficients, yeah, so it's... Yeah, so uh, why things are related, and how the proof goes on, uh, uh, the, the picture is the following. This f h t equal to zero, uh, one can, from this you deduce, one get a, uh, uh, variations of mixed hot structures, Ex uh, kind of extension of q0 plus q of 1 plus q of 2, whatever it means, uh, so it's three-dimensional. Um, uh, structure. What are really interested? You're interested in integrals of log function times d log of t. It's multivalued form. It has some periods, and uh, then you interpret this certain. Mm, what is it? It's middle uh, variation of hot structures. Mm. This uh, uh, Steinberg relation k2 equal to zero, it's really important, otherwise you don't. Unfortunately, the proof is not, again, combinatorial, it's periodic. And uh, uh, I ask many kind of main people in periodic uh, uh, analysis to help me, and it's usually there's no help at all. Yeah, so, it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, I just uh, realized that it was the way we have some paper with Albert Schwarz and Vadim Vologodsky on similar subject, and, we, and just I borrow argument from this paper, and it works perfectly well, so it's, uh, yeah, so it's maybe less for You don't have to expect from mathematicians too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, uh, the pictures, uh, I'll just write you a simple thing. So you write... Um, Suppose function is 1 plus uh, some series in one variable, which is algebraic. Then you take log of f is equal to sum over bn to power n. And I denote by s1 will be log of f. s2 will be uh, s, then s0 will be sum over bn over n mst to power n, and s2 is equal to 1. I get three series, and then denote by uh, capital D derivation. Then I get equation D of s0 is equal to s1, D of s1 is equal to r times s2, and D of s2 equal to 0, where r is sum over n times bn dn, which is a t f prime over f, it's a rational function of some algebraic curve. It's a rational function. And uh, 
uh, then you see that d of this vector is some matrix. A matrix is mm, what is it? Yeah, it's very uh, it's matrix of a connection. Uh, yeah, and then there is something which is. Uh, Uh, the color for something called crystalline cohomology. Uh, if you fix prime number p, uh, there exists a Frobenius f, which is a matrix of the following type. It preserves uh, rate filtration. Uh, oh. What is this matrix? P square b, or oh, Hodge filtration. Uh, where alpha, beta, and gamma are certain series with periodically integer coefficients. And then it satisfies the property d of f, d of phi is equal to p a times phi minus phi times Frobenius start from a, where Frobenius is change of coordinates t goes to t to power p. Yeah, yeah. So you substitute these things in the uh, uh, equation. Get d alpha equal to zero. Uh, d beta is equal to gamma minus alpha times Frobenius pullback Frobenius of R, and d of gamma is R minus pullback of Frobenius of R. Then there is the most <coughs> tricky part, which I don't understand, but we kind of. Vadim Vologodskin says alpha is equal, constant alpha is equal to zero. Uh, and then from this, get equation d square of b is equal to r minus Frobenius of r. And then from this one, you can deduce that omegas are periodically integers. Uh, the proof probably breaks for some pr pr small prime numbers because we really don't understand details of the things. It's, it's definitely breaks for p equal two. Yeah, so it's not a complete. Uh, things, but uh, but morally, that's the origin of uh, the whole uh, thing. Yeah. Okay. So I think I can stop now. Thank you. <laughs>